This is another tutorial in the series I'm doing on array programming using Vector Pascal and looking at how one can use SIMD features. In this one I'm going to be focusing on the specific set of operators which exist in the language which make it easier to deal with vectors and matrices. If we take a simple example, um, I've got one here where I declare an array of re five reals. I declare a set of variables, B, C, D, which are of the same type. First line computes the square root of all elements of the array A and assigns it to B. The next line compares array A and B and assigns to C the maximum in each case. D subtracts two vectors. So if we run it, we see the, the result. I will just um, demonstrate that I can run it. There. Um, I'm not sure whether I've... Yes, this is the same data. The As you see, the first line is the square roots of the numbers above. Then the, we've taken the maximum of the square roots and the numbers above. And then we've subtracted one from the other. Now, all of that is done whole array at a time. That's the basic paradigm of, of programming with array languages. Now, there's a bunch of operators here. Some of them are carried over from existing Pascal implementations. The first column I show the ISO Pascal multiplication operators, that is to say, higher priority operators than addition. So we've got multiply, two types of divide, modulus, and, and set membership. Now, if we go down the vector pastel extensions in some cases what I've done or what we've done is just put in the equivalent mathematical symbols that APL used to do the same things which in most cases are standard mathematical symbols there are a couple of other operators which you may not be familiar with yet here there are the bit shift operators which are standard bit shift off, shift right, shift left. There is vector product, which is just done with a dot, which is standard maths notation, and there is rotation of vectors horizontally. And this is shown with a circle with a, a line going through it uh, here. Circle with a line going through it. That is carried over from, from APL and is meant to be a mnemonic symbol for rotation. Now, if we take an example of the multiplication operations, I'll go and show that actually on the executable screen. Again, a vector RV of reals. Uh, of type RV of reals and it's called A. Here I show just how easy it is, for example, to compute the length of a vector. You do the inner product of the vector with itself and take the square root. Straightforward maths notation. We'll write the... This is illustrating all the multiplication oper operators. Top three are very straightforward. Modulus is straightforward. Here we're showing you can add two integers together and shift them by a given amount. And R is the printing the final length of the vector. So we execute that. I have to do it twice because Genie 
if you don't delete the previous one forces you to do that so simple th this is very simple the po main point here is to show how concisely you can write things in an array language get rid of the, get rid of the version I'm not using There's a bunch of operators for matrix multiplication, which are, sorry, matrix manipulation, one of which I mentioned already. Rotating uh, an array or a, a vector or two-dimensional array to the left by a given number of positions. If you give a minus number an A, you rotate it to the right. Similarly, spin, which rotates vertically. These are directly carried over from APL and the same symbols are used. But to keep with the Pascal tradition, all of them are also given ASCII equivalents. Uh, transpose is again shown with an APL symbol, which in this case is supposed to indicate that you rotate the data along the diagonal along the 45 degree angle. Permute is a more generalized version of transpose which will operate on arbitrary number of dimensions and diag returns the diagonal of a matrix uh, as a vector. Here's an example of using them. Um, I've got a small matrix, a, a two by two matrix um, an integer vector, um, an array of integer vectors, which gives me a larger um, matrix. So what I'm illustrating here is that I can select a subrange. S is a small matrix, a two by two matrix, and I'm selecting part of a larger matrix using the dot dot notation, which is the standard existing Pascal notation for ranges. So I'm assigning two S rows one to two columns naught to one. T is becoming the transpose of the matrix M. H is a horizontal rotate of the matrix M. V a vertical rotate of the matrix M and W the diagonal of the matrix M. Uh, illustrate it executing. Uh, is this the one? I don't have it. Sorry, I don't have this one up, so I can't illustrate that. Um, we'll just go on. Matrix multiplication, this illustrates that matrix to vector multiplication is, is there. The dot operator either works for matrix to matrix, matrix to vector, or vector to vector. So this is a 45 degree rotation matrix. I apply it on the vector initially points along the x-axis, V, I apply it eight times and it should have rotated it back to the starting position. Uh, let's just check that. Oh, I have to compile it. So we start with the matrix, the vector 1, 0, i.e. pointing along the x-axis. We carry out eight 45-degree rotations, and the, 
the vector gradually turns around and returns to the original position. Obviously this extends to rotation operations in three dimensions or more dimensions. Now, a point about matrix multiplication. Iverson, back in 1962, pointed out that the inner product on vectors, which is A dot B, is given as a sum of AI times BI. And this is, in principle, a functional, since it takes two pre-existing operators, plus and multiply, and returns a new operator on vectors or matrices. Now, in his proposal, you wrote the dot in between the two operators you wanted. So you would write plus dot times to indicate matrix multiply. For conciseness, Vector Pascal just uses a dot, but it does follow the reasoning of uh, Iverson in that whatever add and multiply operations are defined for an underlying type, whether it's integers, reals, complex numbers, etc. When you apply these, they generalize, G generalize to doing matrix multiplication, vector multiplication. And I'll illustrate that using an example of strings. Here is a vector of strings with three elements, king, bar, and i. And here is a vector of integers called nums. I can multiply the vector, do an inner product between the vector of integers and nums. And what do I get? Let's show. King Baba the third. That's because the plus operator between strings is well defined. It's concatenation. And the multiply operator between strings and integers is also defined. It means take n copies of the string. So matrix product is therefore defined since the underlying plus and minus sorry plus and multiply operators are defined so matrix product is a functional it takes whatever the predefined operators for that type are and constitutes a new operator APL introduced two other functionals which have been extremely important in subsequent functional languages. Um, they reduce and scan. In APL, you can use the slash and backslash and forward slash to add things up and scan arrays. Let's see if I can pull up APL. Um, if you want try APL, there is a site called try APL. I didn't spell that correctly. So if, if I want to add up the elements of a, a vector, I can say 
plus slash one, two, three. What it's done, the the slash operator takes the, the pre-existing operator plus and injects it between the elements. And if we do it with the backslash operator, no worse backslash on this keyboard here. Oops, no. Uh, this is the problem of shifting to an APL keyboard. You don't know where the symbols are. Um, in this case, it produces the running totals. Now, you can't just do that, use exactly that syntax in Pascal if you want to introduce these functionals into the language. Um, the, the problem is that the, the, um, the operator slash is already well defined. It means divide or real division. So they have to be written slightly differently. They're written, scan is written slash slash plus and reduce is written slash plus. Uh, any binary operator can be put into the position of the plus in this case. Because the most frequent things you want to use are sum and product, the sum symbol and the product symbol, capital sigma and capital pi, are already built in. So here's an example. We form the sum of a, a vector, the product of the vector. We do the scan with the plus and the scan with the multiply, illustrating that the functional is generic. It applies to any operator. If we can run that. So let's just slide that over and we can see what it what it means. There's the original array. Seven is the sum, eight is the product. If we scan it with a we, here's the original array again, scan it with plus, we we build up the sums, we scan it with multiply, we build up the products. There are also exponentiation operators on integers and on reals. There are a bunch of additional operators which I mentioned before. The main things that are significant here are that are extensions are the use of the plus colon plus, minus colon for saturated arithmetic, max and min on integers and reals, and symmetric difference on sets. Now, just some points about algebra. In standard mathematician, plus and minus can be used either dyadically, that is to say between operators, or monadically, that is to say in front of an operator, in front of a variable. And when used monadically, minus x actually means 0 minus x, and plus y means the same as 0 plus y. That's because 0 is what's called the identity element of the integers with respect to addition with respect to the addition operator. What does an identity element mean? If you've got some operator omega over some computing type t, then the identity element i omega, being a member of t, has the property here that i omega omega y is equal to y. That is to say, we take the operator omega, the 
identity element with respect to omega, apply the operator, and you get y again for any y in the type t. For the operator over integers, 0 has this property. For the operator 1, for the operator multiply, 1 has this property. Multiply any number by 1, you get 1. So it has a null effect. It produces an identity. Now, given that plus a is the same as the identity element of plus added to a, times y should be uh, a shorthand for 1 times y. And backslash the division operator, which is the complementary operator to plus, should be a shorthand for taking the reciprocal of a number. In other words, if you use it monadically, slash must be a reciprocal operator. Vector Pascal follows this rule of generalization. The basic arithmetic operators, when dealing with any type, are treated as capable of this kind of generalization. Here is an example using sets. We first define a type color, red, green, blue. We define shades, which are sets of colors. There's a we function here to print a shade out, since it's not a... This is actually a hole in the language at the moment. It doesn't have a built-in write function for sets. So you have to write your own function to convert sets into printable form. Here is an example of just with numbers applying the prefix operators. Plus three, plus two, minus three, times four, slash five, divide six. And the last two should give us reciprocals. Now, look at the cases of the sets. We define a shade made up of red and blue and assign it to A. So A is a set. We now take that set away from the empty set and put it and show that in B. We now sh Next, we apply the minus and multiply operators monadically to A, and we'll see what the results are. So, as we would expect, for the mathematical uh, monadic operators, we get 2 for plus 2, minus 3 for minus 3, we get 4 for times 4, 0 0.2 for slash 5, and 0 for div 6, since 1 divided integerly into 6 is 0, and uh, max max isn't defined. It doesn't, doesn't print anything there. Um, I shouldn't have taken that. The uh, Red and blue, we say minus a gives us the empty set exactly as subtracting it from b because the empty set is the identity operate, identity element in under set addition. Multiply gives us the original value, because the identity element under, multiply, under multiplication for sets is the full set.
that's that's as far as I'm going to go today. In later lectures, I will go on to how all this is translated and I may give some techniques for doing image processing um, using the shift and rotate and masking operators.